Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. We are on Monday Monk 53. This is the beginning of the next year of Monday Monks, where I try to post a vid every Monday. <laughs> and in them, I try to talk about how writing's going, how knitting is going, and just Monkland in general. And I want to thank you for coming by today to check in. I am recording this a day early, although it should be posting on Monday because on Monday, I'm actually heading off to a tiny little private writer's retreat, like private as in I'm just going myself and nobody else, <laughs> very, very private, to a campground here, uh, not too far away here in Oregon. I don't want to tell you which one yet. I will show you because I'm going to go off, see if I can get a pile of words written. Uh, hopefully I'll just get ahead on some projects, give me a little boost into the year. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. One is I'm not able to make it to one of my favorite writing retreats that I go to this year, which is Rainforest Writers. That's held up by Lake Quinault in Washington in the rainforest up there. I'm not able to make it to that this year. So I thought, well, I'll just head out to a little campground. I'm gonna stay in a cabin. And as I've mentioned before, there's no running water in this cabin and no bathroom, but there's electricity and heat. So I feel very lucky. And uh, I will be, as you're watching this, up at that cabin, hopefully writing away. Now, the um, thing about going up there is I hope to take some video so you can see what this campground in Oregon is like. I'll show you inside the cabins. Before I booked it, I actually looked on YouTube to see if there were any pictures of what the insides of the cabins look like. And one person had actually filmed the inside of the cabin. So shout out to you, YouTuber. Thank you for showing me what this uh, interior looked like so that I knew that I should be able to make it work for writing up there. So anyways, happy Monday. Thanks for being here with me. I'm going to start right in writing. How's writing going? It's going good. I am, uh, I said this last week, but it is still true. I am wrapping up the Shame Flynn book. This is a spinoff from my Ali Beckstrom series, which is a nine book urban fantasy. I did two uh, Seamus Flynn, they're actually called the Broken Magic series, and that's uh, Hellbent and Stone Cold. I did those two uh, books, and then I wrote a, another book in that series called Backlash. And now I am adding another short novel to that series. And um, I'm excited for you to get to see it soon. It will be coming out this spring. And um, yeah, I have more news on that soon. But right now I'm trying to wrap it up. One of the things that I ended up doing is I had to go back into the last book of that series, Backlash, and read through it for details. Like I have series Bibles that basically say, when things happened or like how tall someone is or what their eye color is in case I forget, you know, that sort of thing. I have notes of all that stuff. But when I'm writing a novel, there are little details that I add in as I go and I don't keep track of those. So like, I'll give you an example. So um, in Backlash, Shame gets shot. This <laughs> You'd think that was a plot point that would be unusual, but it's not. He's He's a person who carries death magic in his body and uh, so he's often a target and uh, he gets shot and his uh, soul complement which is basically his partner in crime is um, Tarek Conley and Tarek carries life magic so shame gets shot up and Tarek can usually pull the bullets out right or has so far and heal him so this is kind of their yin yang thing they have going and uh, in this book in backlash shame takes the bullet out, you know, out of his shoulder from the last time he gets shot and throws it in his like sock drawer with the, all the other bullets <laughs> from when he's been shot. And I had forgotten that detail that like shame has a sock drawer of bullets <laughs> that have hit him. So like it was good to read back through Backlash because it reminded me of some of these little kind of delightful details about the characters that I had uh, forgotten because I wrote those years ago. I think I wrote Backlash maybe in 2014 or 2013 or something and those little tiny details sometimes just fly by when you're writing a novel so uh, that's going to make this next book even better because I have refreshed myself with the characters so yeah that's going well should be out soon in the spring so I'll keep you updated on that next is how is knitting going well 
This is going to be part, and I will take it as such. This is the one of the prize giveaways I'm going to give here on the YouTube channel for my YouTube subscribers who have been so kind to come by every week, or if you've just joined now, welcome aboard. I appreciate having you here. Um, I am giving away a knit toy and I'm going to show it to you now. This is only for people who either leave a comment or a smiley face or a, an emoji like a heart or a star or something down in the comment section of this YouTube video. I will put out five YouTube videos that will be, I will gather all the names from for all of the drawings I'm giving away in February. I'll actually announce the winners in March. So last week's the year celebration video that I uh, posted, any comments or, or emojis on that, those people's names are going in the hat for any of these prizes. Anybody who comments or leaves an emoji on this one, your name will also go into the hat. So, and then I'll pull out and I've got to tell you, I don't have a lot of subscribers here and that works to your advantage because that means you have fewer people who may win the prizes and, and it gives you a higher chance of winning. So this is one of the knit that toys that I'm going to give away here. I will knit another one. So this won't be the only one I'm giving away. This one's a little unusual. I have knit this once before and it was uh, years ago. I'm going to show you what I knit this time. Ready? <laughs> okay. This may look like a strange string of sausages, perhaps, perhaps a sausage string, but that's not what it is. <laughs> and those of you who um, know this little trick will probably recognize it pretty quickly. Let's see if I can do it. I'm not great at it because I because I've just learned it. OK, so let's see. We want to do and I go this and this oh, like toward me like this. And I go like this. And in there. OK. OK, so far, so good. Are you getting an idea of what this might be? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, there's the sad part. Hang on. OK, this and that. Okay. So it's this and this. No, this and this. There we go. There we go. There we go. I got the right parts. OK, here we go. Da, 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 da. I feel like I should have like circus music, but I think YouTube has this thing where if you do music <laughs> that isn't that you don't have the copyright for you get in trouble so i don't want to get in trouble so here we go oh 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 that was probably the most awkward anybody has ever done that what we are learning here is that i am i am not a clown and i have not gone to clown school but i can make a balloon dog <laughs> this is a balloon animal dog it has um Everything one might want from a balloon animal dog, little balloon animal feet. It's so hard to put on screen. Here we go. There we go. Now you can see it better. He has uh, a cute little face. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> it reminds me, I don't know if anybody has seen the old um, Popeye cartoons with Jeep. Jeep the dog. He's like this little dog that could cl climb up walls and could disappear and stuff. I always like Jeep. But he kind of looks like this, this little balloon animal dog. So, okay, there, that's a good, that's a good, pretty good view of him. So someone is going to win this balloon animal dog and I will send the instructions for how you twist him into a balloon animal. So one knit balloon animal dog. Oh wait, I should put him back here. So, okay, so there he is. Balloon animal dog, someone will win that. Please leave a comment or an emoji down below and that will be given away. Uh, like I said, I will be giving away um, another knit toy, so stay tuned. Okay, so that's writing, that's knitting, and the last thing uh, is how is Monk World going? And Monkland is going well, thank you. We raddies, which we are the traveling rats who have all bought an RV together, an old RV. <laughs> it's myself, my sister and brother, and all of our spouses. We joined in together to buy this RV and kind of timeshare it. And uh, we've done a few little upgrades on it, which I'm going to do uh, some videos on this channel of the upgrades that we've done on the RV because I know people are interested in that kind of thing. So I will be posting those as soon as I splice them together and get them made. But we had a big repair that we had to do this year, which is before we had bought the RV, it had taken some water damage on one of the interior walls. And it's essentially the wall between the cab of the driver's seat and the living area in the back. So if you think of a box van, the f it would be like the wall right behind the driver's seat. It had received uh, water damage and was um, 
falling apart, which is which is not good, not good. <laughs> so we pulled out that wall and I did take video of that and photos of that and the other uh, raddies took some photos of it and all that kind of thing. And we will show you how we took that wall out. And one of the reasons why I want to do that is we went looking on YouTube to see if we could find uh, videos of that specific repair and we hadn't found it anywhere. So hopefully this will help someone else if they are in the same situation as we're in. So we took out that wall and then uh, a couple weekends ago and then this weekend we cut out a new wall, put the fiberglass on it, Phylon I think it's called, to for the exterior part of the wall because it's a wall that's both interior and exterior and we installed it. Now it's not finished installed but but it fit. <laughs> We put it in and it looks great and we have a couple of bolts holding it in place and then we have finishing work to do. We've got bolts to replace underneath the vehicle and more inside the vehicle and there's finish and trim and all that kind of thing, but it, but it worked. We actually have a structurally sound wall back in place with no water damage and we're very excited about that because we can't take this rig anywhere until we get her fixed. <laughs> so we're working on getting her fixed. So uh, yeah, that's probably what's gone on in Monk World. Oh, one last thing, last thing this happened in Monk World is I actually harvested the carrots from the garden. And if you're a long time viewer, you know that I planted them in July, which is the wrong time to plant carrots. You're supposed to plant them, I guess you can plant them anytime, but early spring is good and July is not early spring, <laughs> it's summer. We got our garden in so late last year, but I just left them in the ground. I'm like, yeah, we'll just let them grow for a while. And then, you know, it froze and it snowed and it did all this stuff and I thought well the carrots will either be overgrown and hard and woody and you can't eat them or they will be mushy from <laughs> being in the ground so long but I dug them up this weekend and uh they're great like there's a couple that are bad but I would expect that anyway but the they're fantastic so I washed them off and I've got a lot of carrots so and I still have more to pull out of the garden so I'm leaving them in the ground for a couple more weeks so I'll pull those out and then that will be the end of 2022's garden and then we'll be ready to start planting again hopefully if we if we get to it in time which we are not reliable we are not reliable people on that so so I'm not holding out hopes that we're going to get that garden in but who knows maybe we might get it in <laughs> I'll let you know so yeah, that's it. That's what's going on here in Monkland. Pretty easy stuff. Um, I'm excited about this writing retreat I'm going to take. That's the big thing on my mind and I will take you along with me. So expect next Monday to see some beautiful, rainy, <laughs> drippy, wet, <laughs> muddy Oregon camping. It should be fun and I hope you'll join me for it. Remember to leave a comment down below so you're in the drawing and I will see you soon. Have a wonderful week. Bye for now.